Let's create that in Blender. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're going to be taking a look at Kevaplank simulations and how we can create our own and while we're on that topic we're also going to go over the basics of rigid body physics. Now in case you don't already know what Kevaplank simulations are, it's basically like Jenga except way cooler. Uh, I'll just show you an example right here. This is the final result of what we're going to be creating today. So it's a pretty awesome simulation. They're really fun and satisfying to watch. Um, so we're gonna create our own. All right, so here we are in Blender. Uh, I've just got a default scene started up here and I'm gonna delete everything in our scene by pressing A twice and then delete. Um, and then I'm going to, oh, I guess, I guess we'll add back the starter cube. You're not a true Blender user until you delete the starter cube just to add it again. Uh, but we're gonna use this cube to model our first Keva plank. Now, Keva planks are approximately the size of dominoes. Actually, they're a little bit taller than dominoes, but I'm just gonna model mine to the approximate size of a domino. So one thing that's important to keep in mind while working with Keva planks is that you have to keep them evenly spaced and evenly stacked. And if you don't do that, your simulation is going to kind of fall apart. Uh, so what I like to do in order to keep things every or keep all the Keva planks in a very similar scale and something that can be worked with easily is just to turn on snapping. And in case you don't know how to turn on snapping, it's to, you just have to come down here and click this little magnet, or you can press Shift Tab. Shift Tab will allow you to toggle snapping on and off. And basically what this does is it allows us to, for example, when we go into edit mode here and I'm dragging this vertex, it snaps to specific increments that we can then work with. So I'm going to switch into top view on our cube here. I'm going to go into face select down at the bottom here. I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe mode and five on the numpad to go into orthographic view. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shrink down the sides of our Keva plank just a little bit here. So now we have instead of a nice big tall, or sorry, nice nice square cubic um, Keva plank, we're starting to get a little bit more of a, a flatter and almost domino shaped one, which is our, our end goal. So the in order to make this look a little bit more like a domino here, we're gonna have to make this a little bit taller. So I'm going to select this top face and just drag it up maybe two notches and voila, we have our beautiful Keva plank modeled just like that. It's pretty simple. Now, before we move on, you'll notice one thing is that the origin of this um, Keva plank that we're going to be working with is not in the center. And when working with rigid body simulations, it's very important that you have the uh, origin of the object at the actual center of mass, right? Because that is the point in which the uh, simulation will orbit around. So in order to set our, um, our 3D cursor to, or sorry, our object's origin to the center of its mass, all we have to do is click um, Control Shift Alt C. It's a little bit of a, of a, of a mess there, uh, but you can see we can choose origin to center of mass surface or origin to center of mass volume. Um, in this case, I don't really think it matters because we're working with a cube. Um, but they do do different things depending on your model. So I'm just going to select surface and you can see that we now have our origin set smack dab in the middle of our Keva plank here. So I'm also going to move this up uh, just so it's even with the uh, grid floor here just because we're going to be adding in a ground plane um, to work with next. But before we do that, uh, we're going to go over the basic rigid body physics settings for our um, Keva plank here. So now, a lot of people usually add physics, or actually a lot of beginners, I guess, usually add physics over in this menu here. And, you know, it's handy, it's nice to have, uh, but it's really much better to actually do it through the physics property panel um, over here, uh, where we can actually tweak all the settings. So if I click on, with our object selected, if I click on rigid body, you can see we get a lot more settings than we have over here um, to work with. So I just recommend doing it through here, that way you don't miss any settings, because it's kind of important. Uh, anyway, so if we go to frame zero right now, and because we added our object as a rigid body, if we click play, it falls. Look at that. It accelerates at 9.8 meters per second downward. I guess 9.8 blender units because I don't have any specific units set in this yet. Um, but anyway, that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and add a ground plane in. So 
I have my origin still set at the origin of the uh, 3D space here, but if it's not for whatever reason, just press Shift S and select uh, cursor to center, and then we can press Shift A and add a plane. I'm going to scale this up so it covers the entire grid floor by pressing S and then 8. That way it you know, has a nice big area to work with. We might even be making this bigger. Uh, actually, we probably will be making this bigger considering we're working with a relatively large scale here. Um, but yeah. So uh, instincts tell us that if we click play right now, the rigid body will collide with the ground plane, but it falls right through. And that's because we actually have to add the ground plane as an object that can interact with the rigid body objects. And to do that, we need to just add it as a rigid body itself. And you'll notice it falls, but we don't want it to fall, right? Because it's the ground plane. So we change the type from active to passive. And now, if we come to the beginning of our animation here, you can see that our rigid body no longer falls through, and our ground plane is no longer plummeting to its death. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, there are a few settings in here, um, but they really shouldn't uh, be that important. What we want to really focus on is the physics settings for our Keva plank because these we're going to have a lot of these right we're going to have these stacked up on top of each other in all sorts of weird shapes and stuff so we want to make sure our physics are perfected before we start stacking so if we come down to the bottom here you can see that we kind of get this weird flickering below our ground plane and that's basically because the Keva plank itself is jittering and it's still moving and it never really comes to a stop because I mean, friction is kind of acting against it, but for whatever reason, the physics engine and a lot of different physics engines don't, by nature, just stop things from moving. They usually have a very slight jitter to them. But one of the awesome things is that the Blender physics engine has a uh, way to counter this, and it's called deactivation. So down here in the rigid body dynamics tab, um, we have this option that says enable deactivation. And if we check this, basically, what that's telling the uh, Keva plank here is, hey, if your linear velocity or your angular velocity is less than some value, these values are listed down here, then you can just, you know, stop moving altogether. You can just freeze. And another great setting we have is start deactivated. And this means that nothing will be affecting our uh, Keva plank here. So if we place it up here, for whatever reason, you'll notice it hangs up there until it is interacted with. So if I were to take the ground plane and touch it, then the physics instantiate. Uh, so this is a really handy feature, uh, something that can be used a lot and will be massively helpful in our Keva Plank simulations. Because when you have thousands of Keva Planks stacked on top of each other, things can get a little bit shaky. And even the slightest jitter can cause the entire tower to, co tower to topple um, before you really even want it to. So I'm going to move our Keva Plank back down here so it's on its ground plane. And uh, I don't think there's anything else that we really need to do uh, in order to optimize this scene. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and get building our Keva Tower to start working with. I'm going to start with something relatively small. We'll just do something like, you know, that. Uh, and then I'm going to switch into side view here by pressing numpad 1 and then numpad 5 to go into orthographic. I'm going to duplicate another one of these by pressing alt D. I'm just going to rotate it so it can chill happily on top. And you notice they're a little bit misaligned, but if we zoom in, you can see that the grid snapping helps us out a little bit there. Uh, perfect. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start building the first floor of our tower. Okay. So that is the base structure for my Keva Plank Tower. Um, you'll notice my ground plane is kind of being overlapped, so I'm going to extend that just a little bit. Um, and you also notice that we kind of have these parts that are hanging off the edges just because I used a sort of, I guess, uh, like, I don't know what to call it, um, a pattern that is repeatable in order to do it. Um, so I'm just going to delete all these extra pieces that are hanging off, just like that. These parts are all hanging. And then these guys are completely useless over here. And just like that, we now have an optimized, we'll call it, uh, Keva Plank Tower. So uh, let's go ahead and add some floors to it now that we have it all cleaned up. And uh, we'll look at the final result when it's done. All right, so now we need something to actually knock this tower over. And in my case, I'm just gonna use a standard UV sphere. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. We'll set the shading to smooth out here. And uh, we'll 
get this in a position from which it can be launched at our tower. So from right about here seems pretty good. Um, and we do want it to be more towards the base. So we'll set it to like right there-ish. Um, and we'll add it as a rigid body object. You'll notice by doing so, all of a sudden it falls down. Um, and actually, you know what? We're not gonna set it as a rigid body object yet. We're gonna animate it first. And we can utilize this animation to actually create a um, initial velocity for our uh, sphere here. So I'm going to, at keyframe one, set a location keyframe by pressing I and then selecting location off the list. Then about 10 keyframes in, I'm gonna move our sphere a little bit to the right here and I'm gonna press I again and add a location keyframe. So now if we play our animation, we can see that the sphere just moves between the two places right here, just like that. Perfect. So um, now let's go ahead and add the rigid body physics. And you'll notice that if we click play, it kind of just ignores the animation that we have set for it. And that's because we need to check this box that says animated. And by doing so, when our, well, it goes through its keyframe action, but it's no longer acting as a rigid body. So what we need to do is right at about peak velocity for our ball here, we'll go like right here. Uh, this seems to be like the fastest the ball is moving in this set of keyframes. We're going to insert a keyframe for this animated checkbox. So you can either right click it and select insert keyframe or you can just mouse over it and press I and it will add a keyframe. Then we're going to go to the very next frame, one frame in advance, and we're gonna uncheck that box and add another keyframe for it. So basically what this does is it says, oh hey, you follow your animation path until here but then I'm just going to interpret your animated velocity as your physical velocity, and you can see that it now flies into our tower and collides. So if we play this really quick here, whoop, just like that, and it just kind of bumps and bounces off. So that's good, um, but we do want the ball to actually destroy our tower and not just bounce off. And we can do this by upping the mass in our rigid body settings here, just something like maybe five would be good. Um, and basically, mass of an object uh, a mass of an object determines how much kinetic energy it has and when it has a collision with another object in this case an elastic collision um, it will basically transfer that energy so if our ball has a constant velocity and a high mass that means it has a lot of kinetic energy that is going to transfer to our kevaplanks which have a mass of one right which means they have a little bit less mass which means they'll move quicker um, than or they'll move quicker when they receive the energy that they have and they'll actually move more. So now if we click play, you can see it makes a little bit of a bigger dent. Still not quite what we're looking for, so maybe we'll set the mass to 10 for our sphere. Do it one more time. You can see it definitely gets in and oh, down comes our Keva Plank Tower. Looks like we still actually have some uh, parts still standing. Oh, okay. Well, they didn't quite make it. Uh, but still, maybe I'm going to up this to like 12.5, just because I, I really like those, the, the oomph. There we go. That way we just get a nice clean topple. And I'm also going to expand my ground plane a little bit more, um, just so things don't fall over quite as easily. Perfect. So uh, I want to make our Keva Plank Tower a little bit bigger, because this is still kind of small. I want to get a really tall, giant building that's just going to collapse to the ground. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate our tower a few times by selecting everything and then just duplicating it all. There we go. So this is just an utterly massive Keva Plank tower and we're about to topple the entire thing. So let's go ahead and hit play and you'll notice it's gonna be a lot lagger because it's got a lot more physics to calculate. And you'll notice our ball doesn't have nearly as big of an impact as it did before. And that's because our Keva Plank Tower has a lot more weight on it. But you'll still see that it will eventually topple here. Um, yeah, there we go. It's going to topple just like an actual building does, which is kind of cool. Just falling vertically as opposed to falling out. Now look at that. That is cool. Now you'll notice that at the end there, we kind of got cut short, right? And that's because our frame limit's currently set to 250. So let's change that to maybe, actually we'll go like up to 400, I guess. Um, but you'll notice still that our animation indicated by this little yellow line down here still doesn't go past 250. And basically, in order to allow it to go past 250, we need to change the rigid body cache settings. So that's over here in our um, scene settings. Uh, we can come down to the rigid body world 
and rigid body, sorry, rigid body cache under rigid body world. And we can change that end frame to our actual new end frame, which in our case is 400. And I'm also going to, once again, change the mass of the ball here up to something like 20. That way it has a little bit more penetration into our tower. Look at that. That is majestic. All right, so one last thing you'll notice in these simulations is, well, I guess after we get through this played part, um, you'll notice that there are some of these planks falling through the ground plane. Uh, and this is an undesirable effect because all of a sudden we're losing a ton of planks. And basically what's happening here is um, each frame, Blender does a calculation, a physics calculation saying, where is the position of this object? And in the case of this right here, Say, say my arm right here is the ground plane and this is a, my fist is a Keva plank. The object is saying, okay, frame one, it's here. Frame two, it's here. Frame three, it's here. Still not touching. Frame four, it's here, right? It's not recognizing that there's a collision. If for whatever reason, like frame four occurs and it's touching that ground plane, then it'll automatically teleport it up to the top and count it as a collision. But it's basically passing through and not even realizing that ground plane's there. So how do we fix this? There's a, there are two different ways that we can fix this. Um, Perhaps the more accurate way is to up the amount of steps in our actual uh, simulation here. So you can see right now it's set to 60 steps per second. So if we change it up to 120 steps per second, you'll notice our animation slows down a fair bit because we're doing almost twice the amount of cal calculations. Um, but in exchange for that, we are getting a more accurate simulation with more accurate collisions and less clipping through this ground plane. Now, if you're kind of in need of a fast simulation, another option is to add a solidify modifier to our ground plane here and up the thickness a little bit and then hit apply. And basically this just adds a bigger margin of collision um, for the Keva blocks to hit. That way they aren't, you know, so weakly, I guess, and they, they aren't, they don't easily clip through it. All right, perfect. That's all we really have to do for our simulation. So now I'm just going to come into our rigid body world settings again here come down to rigid body cache and I'm going to hit bake. And basically what baking does here is it just takes the information stored in the temporary blender file and it writes it to an actual file that we can then use later without risking losing or altering our physics simulation in any way. All right, and then you can see that our bake is done because it says free bake here and it says all 400 frames are written to the memory. So if we play this animation, we can see our beautiful Keva tower come toppling down. Look at that, wow. You can see we have no planks falling through. I mean, I guess we do have a few launching off the edge there, but look at that. That is utter destruction right there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some very basic materials on here and render it out. And what you're seeing right now is the final result. So I think that is pretty cool looking. Um, it's definitely got a, a really nice shape to it. You can do all sorts of things with Keva planks too. If you didn't want to build a tower, you could build like a, a wall. You could build a domino course. You could build, yeah, you could build like those weird domino pyramids that people build. Really the limit with this is your imagination and what shapes you can think of. Anyway, thank you all for watching this episode. I know it was a longer one, but I still hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. If you guys are new to Blender or you're already experienced with Blender and you're looking to expand your Blender knowledge even further, head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription for tons and tons of awesome Blender content. You is to, wow, that truck just, there's just a truck outside that just sounded like it just exploded.